What's up, everybody? What's popping? And today, man, today's another episode of the Chill But Real podcast. Today is going to be good, man. We're going to talk about some real good stuff. We're going to talk about um, how to, what's the biblical way to deal with conflict, right? Because we see all the time, like, how the world deals with it. And the world has such an influence on us. How you should handle it. Yeah, how, exactly. How you should handle it. But is that biblical? Right, we're gonna talk about stewardship. I don't want to get too much into detail now, but um, but yeah, that's the topics, man. And um, we can start. Do you you want to start with the stewardship? You said yes, definitely. Okay, so check That'd this out. Good. So now, I, I at first I said we're not gonna get too deep into it, but now I guess we can. So, um, the title is stewarding what you have well before God can increase you. All right, mm. good stuff, right? That's good, right there. Ooh. I like that. All right, <laughs> okay. So look. I'm going to start with a scripture, right? So Luke 16, 10, it says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Mm. With much. But this is my thing, right? What's the biblical definition of dishonest versus ours, right? Because we may, we may think dishonest is just lying, right. but God is a God of integrity, right? So mm-hmm. if you're not giving your all with something, that could be a representation of dishonesty, too. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? But okay. did you want to open up with that, or you want me to just kind of go in with it? Um, so one thing that um, Amos was talking about with the, the whole stewardship, it makes me think about in Matthew chapter 25, mm-hmm. where, you know, um, the, the, the the people have the, the talents. Yeah. And, you know, some, you know, take their talent, and they do nothing with it. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. some of them go out and they multiply it. Right. And then they come back and, you know, uh, you know, the, the ruler or, or in the story, he, he comes back and he's like, all right, so what did you do? Yeah. And he's like, well, I still have what you gave me. Yeah. And then the other ones are like, well, yeah, I, I remember that. It. Yeah. You know, and so it's just kind of like, you know, how what are you <clears throat> what are you doing with the gifts, the talents that God mm-hmm. has given you? And that that's so good you said that, bro, because this is it's a it's a um a part in that scripture that a lot of people overlook. Mm-hmm. And it says that God gave them um the talents according to their abilities. Mm. So this is the thing. It's already naturally in you. Yes. So it's like if if you're a teacher, God gave you that talent. It's right. not it's not like you have to go learn a new skill and do right, it. Right, right, right. You just have to like tap into what God already gave you. Yes. And it's gonna multiply. Oh yeah, definitely. It's gonna multiply. But that's the thing. I feel like a lot of times we're so focused on trying to be like somebody else and not mm-hmm. trying to be naturally who God made us to be. The comparison factor. The comparison factor. And that's that's the world. Yes, bro. That's the world. And I'm telling you, and I see it so much. And honestly, I was even guilty of this. Like, I would see these prophets and they'd be like so powerful and stuff. And I'm like, man, that's so dope. And now, like, you're trying to tap into a like an area that God haven't haven't made you. Like, God made, I'm a teacher. Right. That, right. That's me all day. Right. right, right you right. know what I'm saying? And then whenever you start trying to like prophesy and, and prophecy is not your gift, that's when you start prophesying instead of hey, prophesying. Prophesying. <laughs> you feel me? Yo, and that's real. <laughs> that's real. That's real. And that's not stewarding your gift. Yeah. First of all, you out of order. Out of order. Oh. And like judgment is on the way. That's scary. Like for so real. Scary. Like people yeah. who are out here who do operate in prophecy and who are in the uh the the position of a prophet. Yeah. Like if you're not hearing from God, keep your mouth shut. Yes. It's just that simple. Yes. That is so serious, man. Yeah, you got you got to, man. You got to look. And the thing is the fear of God. Mm-hmm. People need this generation need the fear of God. But yeah. I, I don't want to deviate on that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so <laughs> so back on this uh the stewardship part, right? Yeah. Um what I find what me consistency consistency Uh because it's like think about it like if you steward something you have to constantly maintain it Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying if you in faithfulness the the scripture we just read it says that you know if you're faithful with little god is going to give you more but faithfulness that means consistency you have to consistency consistently be faithful in something and that means that uh you got to deny your flesh man because sometimes you ain't gonna feel like doing it you know that's real exactly like for example um, if you, you know, you, you post in content or whatever mm-hmm. about the Lord and it's not growing, 
ask yourself, like, are you are you faithful over the little? Because think about it. Like, when God raised you up and you're now you're speaking to a multitude of people, right, right. you're going to have hurt people. You're going to have broken people. Mm-hmm. That's that's trusting the God in you right. to give them a word. And if you're not faithful over that little, how can you even be obedient for that? So can I can I can I jump in real Come, quick? Tap in, brother. All right, so it just made me think about think about Jesus's ministry, and people are gonna say, "Well, that was Jesus." Okay, Jesus was a man, yeah, and he faced affliction just like we did. His ministry started off really small, mm-hmm. and as he continued to spread the word, yeah, he continued to gather his disciples, yeah. And outside of his 12 disciples were other believers. Yeah. And it didn't start off like that, but mm-hmm. they listened to his words. Yeah. They Absolutely. seen not just his words, but his deeds and, and power yeah. move. Mm-hmm. And it began to grow. Then you look at the the, uh, the book of Acts. Yeah. It was this, Jesus had died, he but he rose again. And Judas was one. He was off the disciples. He was yeah. off. Okay. Uh, unalive. So, um, but you look at where they were, they were like fasting and praying, like, who are we going to, who are we going to add? Who's going to take Judas's spot? Yeah. But then, okay, they, they grabbed, they, they got somebody. And then as you continue to read in the book of Acts, the early, excuse me, the early chapters, it said that God continued to add. Mm hmm. Yes. Not people. Yeah. Oh, that's good. God continued to add. That's good. So just like my boy said, like when you're faithful in the the few, like God is gonna give you a lot, a yeah. lot more. Because, Absolutely. You know what? I see, I see my boy grinding. I see I see yeah. my girl grinding with the with the small bit that she has. You know what? Hey, she can handle these two. She yeah. can handle these four. She can handle those six. She can handle those twelve. Yeah. She can handle those uh twenty four. Mm-hmm. It's the multiplication factor. Absolutely. He's going to multiply. God is a multiplying God. God is a multiplying God. Yeah, that, that's so true, man. And it's like it it helps you. Because think about it. Everything God does, you learn from it. It, it builds you, character. You better learn from it. Even <laughs> on this journey, right, when you, when you, when you start to steward, you start to... And you start to um, learn consistency. Yes. You also start facing different problems with yes. balance and yes, stuff, yes, right? Yes, 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 but yes. it's like God is a God of order. So God will allow this stuff to happen to put you in situations where you have to prioritize and you have Mm -hmm. to, you have to, um, you know, prioritize. And and that's what God does, but it's all like a refining process. Yes. And it all stems with that stewardship. But I want to say this too, right? Um, for the Mary guys out here. I, Uh here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So look, let me give you some more word. Okay. So check this out. First Timothy three, uh, five, it says, for if a man um, know not how to rule his own house, how should he ca- take care of the church of God? So, man of God, I'm going to talk to you, right? Hey. And I'm going to talk to you out of love. Deacons, pastors, bishops, apostles. Yes. <laughs> God put this stuff in your heart um, to, you know, edify the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. But it's like, man, your home is your first ministry. And if you mm-hmm. don't steward your house well... How can God, how can you expect God to increase you and to put you in a position Amen. to um, help other people if, you're, if your house is lacking? And if you are helping other people and helping and edifying the body in your, in your household is lacking, mm-hmm. then you're out of order according to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So that, that part right there... Um, prioritizing you know that that leans back into what i was just talking about with the prioritizing we got to make sure that we prioritize the mm-hmm. things of god and do it in wisdom right you know to add to what you just stated yeah about you know the house being your first ministry when you go back to the old testament i, I believe it's uh in exodus or either deuteronomy it talks about how you sit at the dinner table and mm-hmm. you spread and, and you talk about the word of god when you go out, you talk about the word of God. And and while Moses ex- is explaining this, he's talking about the fathers teaching the children. Mm, yeah. Like as a man, we're supposed to teach our children. Like I tell yeah. a lot of people, you know, my like parents, like you're, you're, you are your first, your, your child's first teacher. Absolutely. Like my boy, you got a kid. Yeah. So guess what? You are her first teacher. And check this out, man. What kind of father would I be if I allow the government to teach my child 
what they need to know. Right. And I'm right here. Exactly. Man of God, hear from God, and I'm not leading and guiding my child in the in the word of God. Right. I'm letting the government define what exactly. all of this other stuff is. Right, 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 nah. right. And and if it worked back then in the old testament Woo. to the to the Israelites that were faithful, yeah. Why can't it work today? If, if it, it ain't, ain't broke, broke, don't fix it. Come on. <laughs> oh, look. See? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> like, Stop trying to reinvent the wheel, you know? Right. Um, yeah, God God put these things in order. Mm-hmm. Um, the creator of the whole universe, yes. infinite in wisdom, designed something to work mm-hmm. a certain kind of way. So we should probably do right. it the way that he designed exactly. it. And I just want to encourage you guys. So Galatians chapter 6 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Mm. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Ooh. This part right here. Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You guys, there's going to be seasons where it's tough. Yes. It's hard. It's yes. just like, Lord, I'm, I'm praying, I'm fasting. Do you hear me? Yeah. But you keep pressing on because he hears you. Yeah. You're not, you're not out of pocket. Like, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. You're, you're abiding with God, and he's abiding with you. People think, oh, well, I don't I don't feel it. I don't feel it. It's not a feeling. Yes. Yes. And, and we was talking off camera, and the comment I made was, like, this culture is stuck in that emotionalism. Yes. Like, I have to feel it. I have to feel it right. for it to be there. But the mm-hmm. Bible says that... Um, what does it say? God draws near to a broken and contrite heart. Mm, so that means that good. whenever your heart is broken, whenever God seems the farthest away, then he's actually the closest to right. you. And God is a spirit. Um, our carnal mind Come on, is now. so so Preach. accustomed to seeing things in the natural. And if I don't see it in the natural, it's not there. But that's not the things of the spirit. The things mm-hmm. of the spirit is, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, Come on now. Like, if I don't see it, that does not define my reality right. because my reality is not confined in, in this, this natural, natural world. Realm. It's yes. in the spirit world. Exactly. You know, you got to speak things as though they are. Come so on now. saying all that to say, man, God is still there even if it seems like he's not. Right. You feel me? Look at Job. Look at Job. Oh, that's good. You want to switch gears or you want to you stay on this a little bit? We can switch. All right, let's switch it. Let's switch it. I, I like that manual you got over there, bro. <laughs> all right, Appreciate so... Um, we can start with this. Now, I'm going to ask you, how do you feel like the world has taught us how to deal with conflict? And it ain't even just got to be like a, a as men, just in yeah. general. How has the world taught us to deal with conflict? Punch first, ask questions later. Ooh. Or react. Yeah. Before, you know, really, you know, watching and observing and, and trying to like, you know, understand what's going on. Yeah. They want you to respond before, you know, you get all the details. Right. And that's something that, you know, I try to teach the the people that I work with. Yeah. Like, listen, before you react to something, yeah, get the whole story. Get get a better understanding. Yeah. Because you don't want to walk into something and it's just like, Yeah. Oh, well, maybe I didn't have to react that way. Absolutely. And this is the thing, man. The world like when I tell you, the world has really and when I say the world, I mean like the ideologies, the customs of this world. It really messed us up as as people, bro, because it, it puts you under curses and not realizing it, mm, right? So, okay, for example, okay. you know how the Bible says, if you don't forgive your neighbor, God can't forgive you. That's right. what I mean when I say curses, right? Yeah. So, um, the world teaches us, if somebody upsets you, cut them off, uh, forget them, they yeah. did to you. Right. And you have people who proclaim Jesus as their Lord and Savior saying this too. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that's the thing. So it's like, when I say it puts you under a curse, it's like now you have unforgiveness towards your brother and you talking about they dead to you. God can't forgive you because mm-hmm. you can't even forgive this person. And that's what the world t- tell us. They, they tell us, you know, forget them. You don't need them. Right. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you um, the biblical way to deal with conflict. Mm-hmm. Right. So check this out. And this is in Matthew 18, 15 through 17. OK, so this is what it says. It says, moreover, if your brother sins against you, come on now, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. But if he hears you, you have gained your brother. If he would not hear you, take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. 
And if he refuses to hear to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses to even hear the church, let him be unto you like a heathen and like a tax collector. Mm. So notice this. The Bible gives order. It says you speak to your brother alone, right? You don't go blast him on social media. Right. You don't go uh, talk bad behind his back mm-hmm. and all of this. You go try to talk to him alone. If he don't hear you, then you bring somebody else, okay? And and y'all talk about it as a group. Right. And mind you, it talk, so, so and that part is so important because you need godly counsel around you. Because imagine if you bring a worldly person to, to try to do this. The worldly person is going to see things from a carnal perspective. So right. you need somebody of the faith, somebody that, that sees things from a spiritual standpoint um, around you. And yeah. they go and they like, oh, nah, see, they, they is right. Like, you know, so-and-so right, so-and-so right. And if they mm-hmm. don't hear both of y'all, then you bring it to the church. And then right. if they don't hear that, then A, then you can you can have that, all right, A, I'm done with the situation type of mentality. But you got to do it in order. Right. This is the biblical way that we're supposed to deal with conflict. Right. And there's so many, even in the Christian community, Amen. I see so many people, they say something, like somebody will say something mm-hmm. that they don't like, they'll blast them in front of everybody. And it's like, bro, did you talk to this person in private? No. Did you bring I, I somebody didn't, up? I didn't like, think about that. Oh, so you let your first out of order. Away. Yeah. yeah. And God is an order God. He's not the author of confusion. Yes. He's the author of peace. Yes. Okay. So one thing that you said, it just made me think, you said about counsel. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Yes. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. The only way you know how to Ooh. handle these situations yeah. Is if you are in the Bible. Yes. Okay, because God has an answer for for everything. Yeah. That's you, good. You have to literally meditate on his law day, day, day and night. night. Mm-hmm. You have to be praying and because God will give you revelation. Don't like we have the 66 books. Yes. But also within these 66 books, he's telling you to pray, to fast. Yeah. And that's where you get even more revelation. Right. If you just read, that's great. That's the start. Yeah. But the more you read, it's like, wait a minute. I didn't catch that, that that first time. Yeah, that's real. And then it's like, you know what? I could have handled the situation differently. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to tell you, man. I, so I, I had unforgiveness towards my brother, right, for a long time. And um, and I, I it was so bad, bro. I, I, I didn't think it was ever going to leave. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I accepted it in my heart. I was like, hey, well, you know, um. We just, I guess we just never going to be cool again. This is before yeah. I had my daughter. So I was like, hey, I'm going to have my daughter. I guess that, you know, my my kids and, and yeah. his kids, kids they're yeah. they going to grow up separate. And then I was like in prayer, bro. And I heard mm. God say, pray, start praying for him every day. And then and I started to see things shift. And at first, you know, you know how them prideful prayers be. So it was oh. like, I was like, yes, God, definitely. <laughs> I was like, God, please uh, <laughs> deal with him and this and right. that. But don't deal with me. <laughs> Don't right. do it with me. <laughs> Acting like like I was like I was just innocent. Oh, yeah. And then by like day two, my my prayer started shifting, and I was like, protect him, pr- protect uh-huh. him and his family, keep it. Bro, people and sleep bro, on that. Yes, get, when keep I tell going. you, yeah, my heart cooking. started to shift. Yeah. And then shortly after that, we reconciled our differences. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, what? And yeah. you tell me prayer ain't powerful, bro. Power of prayers, man. Power of prayer. P O P. Yes, 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 yes. So that's real powerful. And I like the point which you uh you brought about the wise counsel, right? Because yeah. Proverbs eleven fourteen. We hitting y'all with these scriptures this time, man. Yeah, we yeah, going, yeah. We go going look it up, go and look it up. Yeah. So Proverbs eleven fourteen it says, Where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Okay, think about it. In a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Now imagine it's so important to have the right kind of counsel right. by you because would you think there would be safety in a multitude of counselors that think what what a a a, a worldly mentality? Oh man, it'd no. be crazy, right? Hey, it'd be bad. I'm telling you, gotta have Most godly definitely. counsel oh, uh, yeah. around you, man. Total anarchy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. It's, that's that's bad business, man. So you said it. Bad that's business. a mouthful, man. But what you what you think, man? Any any follow up thoughts, man? Um. I, I agree with everything you said because that's something that I I believe people lack. Yeah, is, is wise counsel, and you know the word says, "For my people perish for lack of knowledge." Yeah, if you don't know where to go, hey, seek some, ask somebody. Yeah, okay, absolutely. like that's that's one thing I think about this this generation. Um, not everybody, but some people. 
well, I don't want people to think that I'm dumb. Mm. People going to think you dumb if you don't ask questions. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Like, listen, I'd rather, I'd rather you ask than to just sit in some sorrow or this hardship yeah. or, or I don't know what to do in this situation. And you've been sitting in it for years. That's bad. Yeah, I feel that. So it's just kind of like, you know, especially especially brothers and sisters in the fold. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just kind of like we know what to do. Yeah. But the thing is, I believe not everybody, mm-hmm. but some people are biblically illiterate. Mm. Yeah, I and agree we don't, with that. And, you know, and I and I even analyze and examine myself. I'm like, Lord, help me to, to do better. Yeah. At, you know, knowing scripture, studying the word, getting yeah. revelation, because it's just kind of like when you get in these, you know, I'm between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Oh, what do I do? Yeah. If you gave your time, as Psalms 1 said, meditating Man. on the, the law of the Lord day in and night. Yeah. You would know what to do. Yeah. Because when my, my pastor said this. Do you pray when a situation happens or do you pray before a situation occurs? Mm, that's good. You can't always like you can always there's there's time to pray. Yeah. But you need to pray before something arises. Yeah. Because when it does happen, it's just like, oh, now I've been prayed up. Yeah, good. absolutely. And then you got the knowledge. Like when I tell you, bro, and this is a true statement, the Bible has the w- wisdom of every topic that you can think of, yeah, bro. Man. Like, and a lot of times we run to the world mm. instead of oh, running to the yeah. word, right. bro. Right. Because when Guilty I tell you charge. every topic it talks about and mm-hmm. it gives you wisdom on everything in life, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, we have to, uh, like you said, man, we got to stay prayed up and we got to stay yeah. in the word of God, you That's know, beautiful. because how, how can you know what God's voice sound like if you don't read his word? We're talk, you know. Yo, you won't know. Listen, you ain't gonna know, bro. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get on off on a tangent, but I will say this. People don't know. They don't know. Some people don't know. Yeah. Like it took me a while. Like you know, as a as a kid, you know, growing up in the church, and as I began begin to mature more, mm-hmm. it was just like, I would ask like you know my aunt and you know my my family and stuff like, how do you know when God's talking to you? Yeah. And they're like, baby, you just you know you you'll know. Yeah. I'm just like, if I knew, yeah, I you wouldn't be, be asking, asking that question. Yeah. But it was because I started developing a relationship for God on my own. Yeah. Because it was like, wait a minute. I have a life. So mm-hmm. I guess what? I have to steward yeah. Ooh. my relationship. Go ahead. Go ahead. With the creator. Go ahead. And so yeah. the only way you can steward this relationship in the correct way, well, is the Bible. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. The Fasting, Bible. Fasting, praying, yeah. being in worship, you know, s- separating yourself from the world. Because if you look like the world, yeah. are you are you really a Christian? Are you really a believer? Absolutely, we're man. Supposed be, we're supposed to be drawn out. We're the chosen people. Be of the world or be in the world, but not of the world. Right. That's that's the truth. And, 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 and this is the thing, man. It's a lot of voices Yo. constantly speaking, right? At, so, at this very moment. And, and this is the thing. The devil speaks, too. The devil. If you don't speak, you you see these school shootings and all of this stuff. These these people murdering these mm, kids. It's a spirit. And they and, and you go on these interview uh, the interviews whenever they get interrogated and they say they just heard a voice telling what voice is telling them to do that. Is it their own voice? Is it God? You know it ain't God. Right. And 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 I know y'all probably asking. You know, well, how do I know? Um, how do I know when God is speaking? How do how can I differentiate God? Mm from the devil and the most simplest answer i can give okay. and i would love to hear your input okay. is if it brings you closer towards god it's god the the enemy would never have you to do something to bring you closer to christ you see what i'm mm. saying it just don't make sense so it's like if it's like oh you you hurt that person maybe you should forgive them or a hey, um Check on your friend and see how they're doing. You know, this may be God telling or hey, pray for this person. Um, hey, go help this person. That that's a godly thing. It's if you go to Galatians five and you look at the fruits of the spirit versus the fruits now. of the flesh. Mm-hmm. And if these things that you're hearing is things of the fruits of the spirit, 
that's right. godly qualities. That's exactly. God telling you. But if it's something like, oh, forget them. You don't need them. Um, oh, mm-hmm. don't forgive this person. Cut them off. Like, is that, that is really God? God? <laughs> would, would Jesus tell you to do that? Mm-mm. So that's my the simplest answer if it's anybody no, that's, that's good. wondering, you that's know. Good. And I'll just add to it. Yeah. Uh like we said before. So uh it's in Corinthians. Uh God is the God is not the author of confusion. Mm. Uh but of peace unto the churches. Yeah. Like he's a God of peace. Yeah. So anything that goes against peace is not God. And just because Woo. it's it's good doesn't mean it's God. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Like, let's just be real. There's a lot of things in the world that taste good, feel good, but yeah. that don't mean it's God. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just, you know, the more you the more you read and you see how God operates yeah. and how he blesses in obedience, then you kind of see like, oh, okay, so if I do what God tells me, and when I see that these prophets or these disciples or these servants did this in the Bible, yeah, and it was something good, yeah. That was God talking to them. Yeah. And real easy. That's Judas, good. Judas betrayed Jesus. Yeah. Like, literally, he went there and he he traded him for silver. Yeah. He had to hear a voice. Yeah. His flesh, some, something about him was not right. Mm-hmm. Why would you betray somebody who you believed or you followed around who was supposed to be the or you you said he was the savior exactly like and and this joker was going around doing the same thing the other disciples he was the definition of a follower of christ yeah he was the definition like yes but go ahead no no no, you go you go but just because it seemed like he was good doesn't mean he was godly yeah and that goes into like wolves and sheep clothing but it's just simple as this God is the author of peace. Mm. He's not the author of confusion. So if anything seems to di- seems distorted and it's making you feel like uneasy, like yeah. uh, this seems like this will hurt this person. Mm-hmm. That is not God. It's not God. Mm-mm. Wow. And even going back to that, uh, what you was talking about with, with Judas, the Bible, I think it's, it may be in Luke, but it mm-hmm. says how Satan entered into him. Like, bro, Whenever you give yourself over to mm-hmm. the enemy, yes, he gonna come. When you open that door, he's walking straight through it. Right. Don't leave open doors. You know, forgive your enemies, man. Um, you have and I, to and, and get. Don't look. It's hard sometimes, right? So we ain't, we ain't over here acting like it's uh it's we're not over here acting like everything is peachy and easy. But the thing is, what I notice when you stay in the presence of God, mm-hmm. um, when you stay fasting and praying, it's easier to submit to God. And it's easier yes. to do the things of God, right? Because your spirit, man, Come on. and your flesh is constantly at war with each other. Constantly. Anytime you are, it, you can't stop sinning and stuff, you got to evaluate your flesh. Yeah. You got to ask yourself, why is my flesh so high right now? And maybe I should go on a fast, you know? Maybe because you haven't read your Bible in two weeks. Exactly. Maybe. maybe. I read the verse mm-hmm. of the day. That's not enough. That's not enough. I said what not I said. Enough. I love you guys. Yeah. Listen, and I'm, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. Yeah. But, man, let me tell you something. You go... When you continue to level up, you you read one verse if you want to. Yeah, you got you will get you gotta shook tap that in whole more, day. Mm-hmm. But to, to to say to go back to what um my boy said, John thirteen verse twenty seven. It's uh let's see, uh twenty six. And Jesus answered, Jesus answered, he it, he it is to whom I shall give a sop. This is KJV. When I have dipped it, and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Mm-hmm. In verse 27, it said, and after the sop, Satan entered into him. Yeah. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. He are, Jesus already knew. It had already been yeah. given to Jesus yeah. that he was going to betray him. And it said, Satan entered into him. Mm-hmm. So Satan entered into him. Oh, so this man, this man had a Sheesh. whole, like, some would say possessed. He had a whole demon. Yeah. He had the enemy operating through him. You want to know what really gets me when reading that? Mm-hmm. Do you see how Satan just use and abuse people? Like, think about Bro, it. That's real. He entered into him to 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 cause Jesus to get crucified. Mm-hmm. After that, he just left. And then whenever he left, Judas came back to his senses and realized what he did, and he and he hung himself. Bro, so this, so the, check this out. 
And the the enemy play a dirty game. So yeah, why yeah. are we fighting back carnally? If if he he you he whenever you fight carnally, mm-hmm. you're opening up the door to give him more access in your life. Most definitely. The culture and the world teaches us your defense mechanism is to fight back carnally. But if you do that in the realm of the spirit, it's only giving him more legal access yep, to yep, your yep, life. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, right? Man, that's wild. That's wild. That's something that's to think wild. about. Hold on, my God, man. Yes. It, this is a spiritual battle, you guys. Bro. Like, it, it's spiritual. Straight up, like, we don't war after the flesh. We we, we can't. We You'll can't. Lo- that's a lose-lose every time. Man. Real talk. Read, go through, read read Ephesians, okay? Read it. Yeah. First Corinthians 10 and 4. Listen, like, we, it, it's all spiritual. All spiritual, It's bro. all spiritual. Like we 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 gotta stand we gotta stand on business. Yeah. And the only way you stand on business is being in that secret place and being on your knees humble before God. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow, that's that's good. <laughs> that's good. Man, look, you know it's a good combo when you get edified from having the combo. Right, man. amen. Like, like that's what's up, bro. But yeah. yeah, that's um that was a mouthful. Yeah. That was and I, I I feel like I know we can go on and on about this, man. But do you got any final thoughts, man, before we close this this guy out? Listen, go back, look at the video, read the scriptures, yeah, evaluate, like really, really pray about where you are in your journey with Christ. Because there are levels to this thing. Mm-hmm. Like it is it, it is what it is. There yeah. there are levels. Uh Paul speaks about it. Like I can only give you milk. I can give you meat. Listen, there's levels to it. It is. And if you want to continue to stay on that milk level, then, hey, listen, that's you stewarding your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to live with. And you will be, you know, we're all going to stand before God and be judged. We're going to stand. Absolutely. So, you know, milk, meat, which, which one? So just continue to, you know, strive after God, continue to, you know, push towards, you know, what he's called you to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that that's true, man. Um, and, and even with stewardship, man, like if you, mm-hmm. all you have to really do is start and be consistent. God is going to bring you everything you need to do it. You got to remember, um, like, like we just read with the, um, the parable of the talents. Yeah. It's already in you. Like he gave the the talents according to their gifts, so it's mm-hmm. already a gift that you have. So ask yourself, like, what is that random thing that God put in your spirit to inspire others and to bring people closer to Christ? You know, is it Amen. is it uh uh movies? Is it uh you being an artist? You know, yeah. like wh- what is it? Yeah. And stay consistent and don't yeah. don't judge your success off of views or likes because you can't you can't do that. Some of the most anointed people are the people that don't be getting that many views or that many likes. Right. And that would only discourage you. You got to be consistent mm-hmm. and do a heart check. Make sure your heart is right. right. And if your heart is mm-hmm. right, God is going to increase it in due time. Right. And some of the people aren't even on social media. Yeah. That's real. Uh, and I just want to say this. Yeah, one go thing. ahead. So it's Second Corinthians chapter 10. Three and four. I think I told you guys first Corinthians, but it just says, you know, for the for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Like my boy said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That right there, right? That yeah, you up, man. Because it's just <laughs> it like do, this bro. is how do you combat Satan spiritually? Yeah, and he knows this. He knows it. He knows this. And so. bro, when I tell you, this is my thing, right? We. Right. And when I say we, I'm talking about God in us. Mm-hmm. Our our voice is so powerful. Uh, Why do you think that the culture is trying to suppress it? Oh, yeah. Why do you think they're trying to stop you from speaking out? Think about it. And it, it baffles me, bro, because if you've seen somebody jumping off of a bridge right next to you, you're going to use your voice to tell them, hey, bro, don't do that. And you're going to talk reason into them. Mm-hmm. But that same Snatch voice. Snatch the fire. Exactly that same voice, man, when it comes to, like, edifying others and stuff mm-hmm. like that. For some reason, we, we get insecure and we be like, oh, well, they don't want to hear. Bro, God gave you that voice right. for a reason. Yeah. And it's power in that voice because mm-hmm. it's not it's not tapped to your own strength. It's tapped to the creator of the whole entire universe. 
the the same guy. You feel that? You feel that? <laughs> the same God yeah. that spoke the words in the world into existence is that same God that rests and live and abide on the inside of you. That's powerful. That's powerful, and it's so true. Hey. But we we for, we forget it. That's why. Why do you think whenever you see deliverance and you see demons getting cast out, come out in in whose name? Jesus. You got to think. Think about a kingdom. Whenever you have a stamp and you go inside of a kingdom and you say, hey, this is the stamp from this is a sign by the king. Mm -hmm. Everybody in that kingdom must respond to that. Got in the spiritual realm. When you use the name of Jesus, it's that authority that every wicked spirit is responding to. It's not your own power. It's not your own strength. This is the king of kings that you serve, and you happen to be a king of, I mean, a citizen of that kingdom. You feel me? <laughs> it's, this hey. stuff is deep, bro. Hey. It's, it's deep, man. But th this is it. And, and man, we have to. Start it again. We, we supposed to be ending this. I know. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah. We're going to end it. We're going to end it. We're going to end it. But ju just remember that, y'all. Just remember that. Um, Just remember that. It's Your voice is so powerful. Why do you think the enemy is trying to cause you? He The Bible says he's crafty. He's crafty, so he's oh, going to yeah. try to discourage you mm -hmm. and make you seem like your voice is not powerful. But I'm telling you, bro, God wouldn't give you those desires if he didn't have a plan for you to do it. And if, he, if it doesn't if it doesn't work, it's not you can't blame God for it if, you, if you're too afraid to move and stay consistent. God gave it to you. Don't be the person that buried his, silent, his talent in the sand. Come on. Bro. And I, I'm, I'm going to end it on that. I'm going to end it on that. Here it is. This is my talent that you gave me. Yeah. Man. Man. Hey, that's good. That's good. Hey, chill but real Sheesh. podcast. Yes, man. Look, chill but real podcast. Stay tuned. Um, we're gonna start posting um more and yeah. doing more reels. We need y'all support though, man, because we really want to reach a lot of people, man. Yes, with yes. this, uh, share this out. Send this to as many people as yes. possible, man. Like, comment, like, comment. Yeah, because that pushes it out to more people. And subscribe. Yeah. Please subscribe and follow. Yes, because yeah. uh, the Lord, the look, we we trying to be obedient. You yeah, know, definitely. But, man, as always, man, we love y'all. Y'all take care. Comment down below and tell us if y'all want, uh, if y'all have, like, any questions or if y'all want us to talk on a specific topic. Yeah. yeah feel definitely. free. Comment down below and we'll be more than happy to do it, man. We love y'all. Love you guys. Take care.